These notes are on finding the equation of a parabola from a graph or a table. Um, the methods that we'll look at in this problem um, won't always work, but they're a great way to, to start talking about how to find the equations of a parabola. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to remember what all the various um, variables, letters, constants, actually, um, that are represented by the letters A, H, and K mean in terms of the mother function, the parent function of y equals x squared. So the vertex is represented here by h comma k, and the line of symmetry is x equals h, and the a controls how wide and um, the orient the um, and whether or not the parabola faces up or down. In these notes, we're going to talk about two different methods. Uh, the first involves um, finding the vertex and using a second point. So in this case, our vertex is right here at 4, 0. So I always start with my uh, vertex form generic equation. So y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. And the first thing I can do now that I know the vertex is I can plug in the h and the k value. So I have y equals a x minus 4 quantity squared plus 0, which means I don't have to write the plus 0, but I can. Now, we can see in this equation at this point, we have three variables, um, y, a, and x. And in order to get the equation for this parabola, what I really need to find is the a. Remember, the equation of a parabola is going to have a y and an x variable. That's how we have the relationship to get the parabola, but I need a value for a. So the first method we're going to talk about is by using a second point. So I look at this graph and I can see that the parabola goes through the point 2 comma 4, which means if I plug 2 in for x and 4 in for y, I can solve for a, and that will get me the a value that is appropriate for this particular parabola. So I have 4 equals a times the quantity 2 minus 4 squared. And I'm going to take off the plus 0 because that isn't necessary at this point. Adding 0 is, keeps the number the same. So I have 4 equals a 2 minus 4 is negative 2 quantity squared. Negative 2 quantity squared is 4. Dividing by 4 on each side, I get that a equals 1. So I now have my h, my k, and my a. So the equation is y equals 1 x minus 4 quantity squared plus 0. Or, because adding 0 and multiplying by 1, I can write that a little more simply, simply x minus 4 quantity squared. Now, in the course of, oh, sorry, I have one more example using this method. So, um, let's look at this graph. In this case, our vertex is a maximum, and our vertex occurs at negative 3, comma, 4. So, again, I start with my generic equation written in vertex form. I can now plug in my h and k. So I have y equals a x minus negative 3 quantity squared plus 4. Remember, this is minus whatever the h is. So if my h is a positive value, as it was in the first example, I'm doing x minus this positive value. So it's x minus 4. However, in this case, our h is a negative number. So I'm doing x minus a negative 3, 
which means I can simplify that to be x plus 3 quantity squared. So now I'm at that lovely place where I have my, uh, the only variable that I need to actually figure out at this point is a in order to find the equation for this parabola. And in order to find the a, I can find that by plugging in a value for x and y that is known by looking at the graph. So when I look at this graph, I see a that goes through this particular lattice point, which is the point negative 1 comma 2. So I now can plug in 2 for y, negative 1 for x, and I can solve. Um, many different ways to start this particular solving process. I'm going to subtract 4 on both sides first, so that gets me negative 2 equals a times, and I'm going to simplify the negative 1 plus 3 so I now can simplify the 2 squared. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 4, which means that I end up with a equaling negative 2 over 4. But of course, I can rewrite that as negative 1 half. So I now have all the information I need to plug in an a value, an h value, and a k value. So the equation is y equals negative 1 half x minus negative 3, so there's my plus 3 quantity squared, plus 4. And there's the equation of this particular parabola. Now in the course of graphing parabolas and um, using table of values to do that, you might have noticed, hopefully you have noticed, um, a pattern with your first differences. So when I look at the table for the function f of x equals x squared, my values for um, negative, x being negative 1 to 4 are here, and then here are my first differences. And notice the pattern here is that I have um, a negative 1, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, etc. So we often talk about the A pattern um, in when A is 1 as being these numbers, as being the odd numbers, basically. Now, if we look at an example, however, where A is not 1, um, I need to sort of figure out what is happening here. So if we remember from my previous problem, so I'm just going to right over here when I have just x squared, my pattern was negative 1, 1, 3, 5, 7. And if I look at this, I can see that in order to go from this column to this column, I'm multiplying by 2. And lo and behold, that's exactly what my a is. So when I'm looking at my parabola, I'm looking for this pattern of of negative 1, 1, 3, 5, 7, and trying to figure out what has happened to this pattern in order to figure out what my a value is. So let's look at an example of this. Um, in this particular graph, um, again, I start with my generic vertex form equation. And again, I can see my vertex, it's right here at 4 comma 1, so I can plug that in, y equals a x minus h, so x minus 4 quantity squared plus 1. And now I need to find my a pattern. So my a pattern is all about um, the, what's changing, the sort of uh, rough way of saying sort of slope, um, from each time I increase by 1 on my x's. So when I go over 1 on my x's, I go up 1 on my y's. When I go over 1 on this x, I go up 1, 2, 3 on my y's. Over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on my y's. So I'm getting the pattern 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. Um, that is the pattern for when a is 1. which means I now know my a value. So my equation is y equals 1 times the quantity x minus 4 squared 
plus one. And then I can write that without the one in the front because multiplying by one keeps the value the same. If this pattern were two, six, 10, that would be the pattern for when A is two. If this pattern were three, three times three, five times three, seven times three, nine times three, then the A would be three. So what I would, what I do is I take this pattern, one, three, five, etc., and I need to figure out what has been done to that pattern to to get the pattern that I see in the particular parabola I'm looking at. So in my particular parabola, so we would say this is the a equals one pattern, and this is my parabola. And I have to ask myself, what has happened from the a equals one pattern to my parabola pattern? And in this case, I've multiplied by one. So a equals one.